Hi everyone, welcome back in this episode. This is part two of the two-part series my, of my interview with Paula Fortich, another seasoned freelancer who was nice enough to go on air with me and give you tips for the tips here. Blah, blah, blah. The tips here are for both seasoned and newcomer freelancers. There's a lot to be learned and in this episode, if you haven't seen the previous one, I'll link it down below where he talked about his perseverance and finding work and what it can take to find work and succeed as a freelancer. And in this second and final, well, maybe not final, I will get him on air again soon because he has a lot of teachers. But in this segment, he will give more specific tips for freelancers, both new and seasoned. So stick around for that. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed filming it with him. And if this is the kind of content you like, I make content to help freelancers improve um, in their career and life in general. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and share this. It would mean a lot to me if you also comment down below. Your comments are my oxygen. They help me realize or at least tell me that uh, the work that we're putting out is helping people and we're giving value and also share this to somebody and I hope that it will help um, people out there. This episode also includes very, very specific tips that Paulo has for you. I also ask him what are his three top uh, suggestions for freelancers to succeed so stick around for that there is a lot for everybody um so yeah i'm paulo uh, most people call me pal um so i'm a consultant you know to cut this long story short i jumped from an office-based job or in the call center i jumped into remote work i was like excited about it i i i used the i used the the my new formula uh we're in like I think total it, it's less than 10 sentences for a cover letter. It's always, I I'd always put there like, oh, le wanted to get on a quick call. You can reach me through. Uh, His cover Netflix letter and, tips, uh, sent up. Quick yes. call. Yeah, quick call, right? Um, and then I would always put there so that you can evaluate me further. If we nice. are a good fit. Nice. Right? So that's when the, uh, you mentioned the magic happened when um, it was a blessing in disguise when I got fired from the 3RR job because that um, customer or that client offered me um, $8 per hour and I was asking for $10 for hour. And I can vividly remember that I have, back then I had really poor negotiation skills. And Did I you was sharpen lucky once it? Again. You're lucky. I was yeah. lucky. Yeah, because like, I, I said, like, okay, I'm asking for 10 I said, like, I'm going to offer you $10. Okay. I said, okay. But he offered, like, if you do good, if I feel like you're worth $10, I'll give, it, I'll, I'll give you $10 per hour. Okay. Um, so it was an all-around job. Like, I was asked to um, list down what are the things needed to put up a salon. Like, Imagine that my background. The marketing is, uh, side. Build a physical salon. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Right. So like, thank God, thank God to uh, Google. Uh, yes. Because Google helped me a lot. Oh, um, um, I, I, I also wanted to give a, a quick preview of what it is that you do. You explained it very well to me during our private call. Uh, basically, Paulo puts together people, and he makes. You explain it. You 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 get clients and they hire you to form teams. That's right. Pre-COVID, with offices and everything, right? That's right. So these uh, the these clients of mine in the U.S. Uh, so usually, um, and this is what I've learned, um, they look for people to do stuff for them for their day-to-day um, -day operations. Um, they can always go with a uh, BPO, but they feel like it's not it's it's more expensive, right? And it's not that flexible, uh, because like when they go to the to a BPO, it's going to take time for negotiation. They're going to write, uh, you know, uh, go through the legal things, and then I think it takes like the the the, the lead time needed would be like two months before they can start. It. As compared to uh, to working with you. If they hire me, if they go to me like in three days, I can find something, someone for them. A team of? <laughs> Most of the time. Um, usually, uh, yeah, I start with like a team of two and then it goes with five and then um, we go to, uh, it gets to 10. Uh, and these yeah, are usually the outbound callers, if I remember correctly. That's right. So I've had a client who uh, at our peak, we had 
200 people who were doing sales, uh, sales development for, um, yeah, f we had 200 people all over the Philippines uh, who were doing outbound calls in the U.S. as sales uh, development representatives. Um, I have had a client as well uh, who was into um, data entry, data labeling. So looking for data uh, entry uh, professionals here? That's right. Okay. Um, so the, the, w they just want one person to take that headache away from them to find people, to train people, and run operations. So right. that's, my, that's my niche. Yes, that's what he does. So it's very, very high level. And imagine then what he did after the contract ended, what he was still willing to do, the humility, the perseverance. And, when, and super thank you, by the way, to Paulo, because when we were talking in private and he told me his story, I was like, dude, people have to hear this. And he was hesitant. He was hesitant at first. But when I really, I didn't even really have to pound it. We were just talking. And I said, so many people are messaging me because of COVID. They lost their jobs or they want to look for work online and they don't know how. And your story can really help them. He finally agreed. So thank you so much. And yeah, the reason why, yeah, I mean, it's a different story as well, but like, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yes, I got a job. Um, and then I was like, uh, after two weeks, uh, he shared with me like, okay, um, you're worth uh, $12 per hour. Nice. So instead of 10, you got 12. Now, I, I would like to ask, Paulo, especially for most of the people who are watching my channel and who joined the group, a lot of them are new or they're not new, but they want a better job. They want better pay. Um, what would be the top three advice that you can give them that you yourself have practiced that yielded the best results for freelancer success? Um, number one would be accept the fact that there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in life. I love that. I've been in this uh, game for the past five years. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I go back, I was lucky when I, it was just more of like when I did uh, the, my re first remote work, I was lucky. So it was a lateral transfer. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that was my official start. The official start was when I lost that contract. Yes. And then... You had, had to, to look for work like the rest that, of us. Yeah, that was the. F I think that was my first foray into online freelancing, remote work. Okay. Um, first would be there are no shortcuts. No like, shortcuts. There are no a hundred rejections, plus uh, no responses. <laughs> uh, We've yeah. all been uh, there. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, so when I was able to, so I accepted the fact back then. Uh, yes. Where and I have a I'll share with you the link of um, yeah I think I wrote I have a blog so I, I wrote something about it yeah uh, I was we'll drop your links then um, so I when I accepted the fact that it's it's going to take uh, so I gave myself six months to master Upwork pretty aggressive right yes <laughs> yeah so um, first that's first uh, number two would be um, Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. Um, invest in yourself. Um, so, the the first time I've heard that it's what it was with I think some pe some people here who's who's going to be watching this and for those with Ebro and Jerson who's on the call right now, um, if you've heard of Chinkitan, so um, he was still starting out around 2014 with okay. uh, with uh, with what he's doing. And then he went to Kagayan de Oro. I was able to join one of his uh, seminars, workshop, I think seminar. And then like the first thing he said, said like invest in yourself, buy books, re read books, learn. Yes. And I kind of felt that back then where I'm like, you're saying that because you're selling books. <laughs> <laughs> How self-serving that would be because he was selling, he was selling books, he was selling a book. But um, then you realized. I, and I purchased a book. I, I bought his Kool Aid back then. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you took a sip and. And then I, it took me maybe, yeah, two years before I realized like what he was saying was real. Like I, when he said like invest in yourself, the first book I, I, I purchased was his book. I read about it and then I, I was never a reader. I worked nine years in the BPO. Not one of my managers or my superiors told me to read this book. This is really good. 
And oh. this is a sad story. Not one. Yeah. I don't I'm not sure for Three. those who are for for those who are listening who are from the BPO, I'm not sure if your manager uh or managers <laughs> ever uh encouraged you to read book but uh, mine did not. Mm-hmm. Um he or they shared nuggets of wisdom to me or to us from books that they've read. I see books on their shelves. But they never encouraged you to actually read. Make it a habit, I, you mean? I don't remember. Right. I don't remember. Because like the reason why I, I, I can I can say that I don't remember because when I jumped into I mentioned like from the BPO someone hired me to work remote as operations manager. Their first requirement was read this book. And nice. I was dumbfounded like so you're going to pay me for my first month just to read this book? <laughs> And then, like, observe the operations. I'm going to. I'm, you're paying me six figures, um, just to read the book. Like, wow, this is an awesome company. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that anyway. would be. Oh, before you proceed, I would also like to add, like, it's not just people who are big readers who or those who sell books who will say read books. It's people who are, are already very, very successful read books. And I'm talking Bill Gates, for example. I think he reads something like a book a week or even more. Yes. Warren Buffett, they, they're all book readers. And it's not an excuse, oh, I don't like reading because there are audiobooks. I have n- the, so the number of books I've read before, so before 2000, I started, yeah, I, I jumped into remote work 2000, late 2014. So pre-2014, I think I've only read one book, the one that I bought from Chinky Tan. And now? And then, I don't know, maybe... 10 more than 10 nice nice <laughs> and that's not a lot right like five years like two books two, two books a year but if you practice uh, it and those were good books that's better than somebody who read 50 and doesn't even practice what um he she read first first rule uh first advice would be accept that there's no shortcuts you have no to shortcuts yeah. invest in yourself you have to invest invest in your uh self that's uh, intellectually what you tackle yes yeah um, and emotionally as well. Like, yeah, I agree. You no, know, um, don't rest. Don't rest. Don't fear being rejected. Yes. Um, Do not fear being rejected. That's right. Because you'll um, be like living in fear a lot. And one of the advice I've shared with someone who's young, um, I don't know how to say this in English, and I'm a native Bisaya speaker. Um, so I'm a longer. I'll with, try. Yeah, if I can get it. Bisaya, and then if you can translate this. So, kadaghanan dato baga og nawong. Um, the more money, nawong is face. Yeah. Um. So it's like. Uh, dato is rich. Yeah. Most rich people they don't get ashamed easily. They don't get ashamed easily. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to say it in English, but like, for me, that's how. That, what does that mean? It, if you want to get rich, don't be ashamed or... Oh, yes, yes. Fortune uh, favors the brave. Kind of. Yeah, I think yes. that's right. Fortune favors the brave. Yes. If you want it, go for it. And I have to say, this guy practices it. Um, once I started making content, and several people were reaching out to me asking for tips, asking for advice. He was the first and only one of two who actually said, let's get on a call then. Because I want to create content as well, and I haven't started, and I'm afraid. And that's the reason why I, t- I took this opportunity to be on this call. Because mm. maybe you can start my uh, fear of being seen on camera. Yes, uh, you're great on camera, and you have so many things to teach people. And I think, you know, what I tell myself, and I think this you can learn from, is you do it for the audience. You don't do it for yourself. The minute you come from that point, of uh, from that perspective, because I get shy too, I, hard to believe, but I also get shy, I get nervous. But once I remind myself of the messages that I receive, people saying that they need help looking for work or they need help looking for better work, it's all for the audience. And the minute that we start making content with our audience in mind, with help in mind, not money, then you can really battle a lot of the fears and um, good karma will be coming your way too. But it's really with the audience in mind. That's right. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing because the content that I want to do would be gaming. I want to be a pro gamer. <laughs> well, I think you should do what you want to do. Yes, no. but you can always um, okay. You could always like be a guest here <laughs> if that's not what you want to do full time. You're welcome back here anytime. No, I, I want I want to. I don't play anymore. So it, 
I just want to play. I can't play anymore. I am not that good. So like, no. I, I'm going to create content, but f not for gaming. I think that's uh, that's that's not my forte. I just so have to like audit what my what my skills are and then what yes, I can and value I can give to the audience. Yes, and your goal, your goal, like what do you what do you want to do? Third tip would be. I thought it tip. was that Bisaya quote. The Bisaya quote, yeah. The, the the so if I were yeah uh, if I were to emphasize like what you meant, you you articulated well. Um, fortune fear, for, fortune fear is the brave. The brave, yeah. No guts, uh, no glory. No guts, no no glory. There's like I can give ten, but like if I were to um, yeah, give my top three. Th those would be those would be the 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 the. the th um, like the number three, like it has benefit benefited me. A lot of times, like I got I agree. Job. Yeah, another point I wanted to emphasize with the uh, with the uh, fortune uh, favors the brave. Um, and I think I've heard this from. I think this is one of your one of the posts that you had in in one of the social media uh, pages. Um, do not be meek. Uh, so fortune favors the brave. Yes. So when I when I when I negotiate with uh, with clients. Um, I go for the highest rate that I feel that I deserve. Good. Um, so I don't like because I'm from the Philippines, because I'm exactly. Filipino, because of the color of my skin. I agree, one hundred percent. Right, and then yeah. like there are people who can speak better than I do. I have a thick accent. Um, in terms but it's of, coming like, out clear. Yes. Um, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> if you say so. Um, <laughs> but um, like. Sometimes I get inti intimidated if I talk with someone who's really good in English. I kind of feel like, wow. But when I, but I just feel like, no, I, 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 I deserve this rate. This is my asking rate. If you don't want it, then it's totally fine. I would respect if you're going to find someone who's going to uh, be charging much lesser. It's okay. It's so. It's more about. It's it's a match. It's matchmaking. Yes. It's, it's more of timing, matchmaking. Yes. Um. So like, if if. If they feel that they they willing to pay me that much, then okay, good. If they don't yeah. feel like they pay me that don't much, don't be shy. But yeah, so and I feel like no, I, I don't want to take that. Or if you're kind to me, if you if I kind of feel like okay, there's going to be growth. Like if you don't, if you're not going to give that rate to me right now, but maybe you see future, potential. Like, yeah, I see potential. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just about the money. It's also the culture. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had a client last year. Um, he wasn't paying that high, but I learned so much from him. And he was also a reader. So there are these things to consider. So that's a good point that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, uh, Paolo. Uh, and oh, you still didn't drop your links, your Instagram. How can they find you? Uh, yeah, so they can, so yeah, they can find me and the things that I wrote. <laughs> Yes, please. Uh, months and years ago. Uh, so my uh, blog is uh, goremotetoday.com. Goremotetoday.com. Yes. So they can find me there. So if uh, they, if, and they can reach me through my, yeah, send me a mess message on Messenger, Paolo for Teach. Um, Any Instagram or Twitter? Tumblr? Instagram. <laughs> I don't have yet. My Instagram is my personal space, so there's not much you can learn from me there. So it's not worth mentioning <laughs> anymore. Okay. And so unless Facebook. Unless people would want, yeah, uh, Facebook, uh, especially on Messenger. My Facebook, I don't have a, yeah. So on Facebook, I also have a page called the Online Professional. Oh, um, it, I don't yes. even know about that. Okay. So we'll, we'll yeah, drop the link a, below. The Online Professional on Facebook. I'll share with you the link after this call. Okay. Um, I haven't been active there, but like, you know, I want, want to be able to help. Uh, so I remember when COVID started, a friend of mine who was in Singapore sent me a private message. She said like, You're, you've been working remote for like several years. Uh, you should, her, her, her words were, you should uh, teach people. You should share how to apply work. Yes. yes, yes. And I think um, so, that could be something we could cover more in detail in future episodes if you're up for it. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, so I'm. So after our call, it's late. I my my brains uh, brain cells are still active. So <laughs> We're used to, to it. Uh, I'm going to get my hand into like creating a short video on. Yay. How to apply for work on 
my technique, like what has worked for, yes, for of me. Course. And then the, the, the last client that I got uh, on Upwork was um, December last year. Okay. I just wanted to try if I can still get, there's this saying in Tagalog, kung may asim pa. So I wanted yeah. to try, like, <laughs> are the things that I, uh, that I have learned with Upwork, uh, are, they, are they still relevant? And then uh, they still are because I was able to land one client and then um, so very relevant. Charging, yeah, I was charging her fifteen dollars per hour. What kind of work? Webinar assistant. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and, and then I didn't even have the. I'm not even a master. I, I just have like uh, the basic level skill for for for. Um, for the webinars for, for 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 the webinar they were using zoom and it's 2020 i mean it was already 2019 right everything yes can be found on the internet. yes and yes forget you have i agree yes <laughs> ask friends and the live chat feature too of um a lot of the major uh websites or even the not so major ones mm -hmm. and the reason why i, I charge her 15 dollars per hour because she's a ceo at, uh, at that at what company and then like 15 dollars per hour is peanuts yeah, and I, I I also like um, regretted why I did not charge thirty dollars per hour. I should have. Yeah, uh, actually, with your experience, with your personality, that's minimum. I'd say from my experience too. Um, you know, negotiating rates. Yeah. So, but well, anyway, it was not really for for the money, but more of for to me try. To just, yeah. So I'm going to share as well the link of that specific um article i wrote like five Thank years you. ago on how how to win on upwork and then these are still relevant and then i think perfect and i hope that this is good practice and maybe soon we will see you on your own show um if not then we would love to have you back here and at the end sure. of the day this is for the viewers um i don't make any money from this this is for the viewers covid has really wrecked our economy and um i'm glad that you saw it too and that you agreed to get on this call and thank you again and god bless you God bless you as well. Comment down below if you have any questions for myself or Paolo. I've also included the links to our social and how to get in touch with us. If this is the kind of content you like, don't forget to subscribe, hit like. It helps um, get the video videos to people out there um, with what's going on. A lot of people need work and we're hoping that these free uh, videos will help people not only land jobs but find great clients and improve their lives. As always, thank you so much and see you soon. Bye.